we obviously spend a significant amount of time uh, dedicating our energy to fixing a cornerstone of the shoulder, the rotator cuff. Uh, but this talk is about what we do when we can't fix that rotator cuff, when we have an irreparable cuff. So for so long, the irreparable cuff tear in an active, healthy patient was a devastating problem and very frustrating for both the patient and the surgeon. The options available were really uh, very limiting. Uh, you could debride or partially repair, but of course pain relief in that setting and improved function is relatively unpredictable. Tendon transfers were an option, but that involves a rather extensive exposure, and studies have found that that can lead to osteoarthritis uh, progression rather significantly uh, in a sizable number of patients. And then the reverse is a good option, but perhaps not for the young patient and someone who is a bit more demanding from their activity level. So in 2012, Dr. Mihada presented and published his biomechanical study looking at the reconstruction of the superior capsule of the glenohumeral joint. This is done either with the dermal allograft or with fasciolata autograft. And the indications for the SCR include a massive irreparable, and that's key because we always want to take advantage of these constructs that the previous speakers have demonstrated. If we can repair it, absolutely we want to. If it's not repairable, then SCR might be an option. If there is minimal or no glenohumeral arthritis, such as Amata grade one or two, if there's a functional deltoid, a good intact or repairable subscap, and in a young healthy patient with good biology allowing for healing. So the technique involves uh, medial anchors, and we want to use three. Um, and most find that the knotless 3.0 suture tack or the 3.9 corkscrews are helpful. These anchors need to be shifted a bit posteriorly uh, off the glenoid face. And then laterally, we use the techniques shown in previous talks with uh, the speed bridge or expanded speed bridge. So those, the medial row of that lateral construct is placed. The arm is then positioned in about 30 degrees of abduction and using uh, the measuring device shown here, we measure between each of the anchor sites to gain our uh, graft measurement, which is then cut to size on the back table. We add a centimeter beyond those anchor measurements. And you mark where the sutures are going to be passed through at the anchor sites. Fiber tape through the lateral prepared locations and then the knotless construct medially. So those sutures medially are passed in a mattress configuration and then loaded into the shuttle loop. That construct aids in passing the graft. So we deliver it through a 12 millimeter passport cannula in the lateral portal, which may be incised. And then as you tension each of the knotless medial anchor strands, that really helps in delivering the graft, which I think early on uh, was challenging or frustrating for a lot of people. But the knotless medial row really helps to eliminate some of the sutures in the uh, passport and helps to deliver the graft. Another refinement that's been uh, studied and developed in recent years is the margin convergence. And this really isn't uh, an optional step. Um, the posterior repair is necessary to either residual uh, infraspinatus or posterior uh, cuff. And then the anterolateral repair is recommended. Anteromedially, that may can over constrain. So Mihada showed that posterior side-to-side -side suturing does improve shoulder stability. And for this purpose, we strongly recommend that posterior margin convergence. So SOS has showed us good functional improvements. At two years here, you can see ASCS and SANE scores. And then VAS scores at two years also improved. This, just this year, uh, two uh, systematic reviews were published looking at all of the literature on SCR. And my colleagues at Mount Sinai uh, presented their findings in arthroscopy, and they found that SCR meaningfully improved shoulder function and reliably reduced pain with a reported graft failure rate of 11.7%. And just a week or so ago, um, out of uh, Mayo Phoenix, they published in JSCS their systematic review, which found that in the allograft clinical studies, there were increases in ASCS scores, range of motion values and the chromohumeral distance, and also decreases in VAS scores in all of the studies they reported. So I wanted to show a few of my cases. This is a 55-year-old 50, 50, female who was a work comp patient. 
Um, and she presented with an irreparable atrophied supra and infra. She had pretty significant pain. That was her biggest problem, although functionally she was also very limited. And she underwent an SCR. And then because of uh, her exam at four weeks, we did a second look. Uh, sorry, uh, her physical exam at four months, we did a second look. And I've shown these pictures to some of my other colleagues here before, but I demonstrate them because they were just so striking to me. I, I was stunned that it would actually look like this at, at four months. This is not cuff, this is the graft that has healed to the greater tuberosity. Um, and she, uh, at one year, shows a preservation of her acromiohumeral distance. In fact, it's slightly improved from pre-op, and her VAS score was a two. So she was very pleased with her improvements in her pain. And then this gentleman is a 57-year-old heavy machine operator. Um, function was his big problem because uh, of his work, and he had an irreparable atrophied supra and infra. And he underwent his SCR, shown here. And at six months, he returned to work. He reported a VAS score of zero, and he was very pleased with the same score of, of 85. His right side is his operative side. So what do we do if we have a patient who is not within those indications for SCR, uh, such as an older uh, biologically patient uh, or someone who has arthrosis or perhaps glenoid deformity? Well, fortunately, we have the reverse as an option for these patients. We have the 135 degree and 155 degree options, which uh, 135 degree is, is typically preferred by most people. Uh, the patients who are upper extremity ambulators who lean on walkers or crutches may be um, better indicated for 155. But the system allows us to have some glenosphere modularity for lateralization. And one of my partners likes to say that anatomical knowledge is surgical power. And the VIP system gives us that anatomical knowledge. It's, uh, in my opinion, very nice to be able to preoperatively plan where your implant is going to go so you know what it will look like and then have a system that will actually allow you to uh, effect that plan uh, based off of your preoperative imaging. And so this is a patient who had pretty significant superior glenoid wear, and it allows you to plan that inclination, which I think is so hard to do um, in the operating room, but the VIP system allows us to do that. So here's our reverse SOS data showing VAS um, and SANE scores at four years. And then ASCS scores also at four years significantly improved. So in summary, SCR is a great arthroscopic option for the younger active patient who has an irreparable rotator cuff tear. And current systematic reviews do support decreased pain and improved function with that procedure. But we have the reverse as an important option for those patients who are functionally older who might fall outside of the SCR indications. Thank you very much.